And a good Sunday morning to you. I'm Andrea Oliver. Welcome to this edition of Polk County Today. My guest today is a board-certified facial plastic and reconstructive surgeon with the Watson Clinic. He's considered an expert in the field and have performed thousands of cosmetic procedures, uh, primarily in the head and neck region. Dr. Ram Lakhani got his medical degree from the University of Miami uh, School of Medicine, Go Hurricanes. Yes, uh, followed up with, <laughs> with uh, an otolaryngology residency at Wayne State University in Detroit. And uh, it says, sir, that your primary work is, is, is about uh, providing a natural and youthful appearance. Yes, I think that is of the utmost importance. Oh, my. I, you uh, know, absolutely. I, a, a doctor with that focus is A plus. Well, thank you. In my book. Well, it's you see a lot of celebrities on TV, and of course, we all wonder how and where mm-hmm. they went to get this uh, work done. And I agree; I'm I'm quite frightened by some of these uh, disasters myself. Mm, but yes, yes. Of course, I vowed from the very beginning to avoid those kind of scenarios. Mm-hmm. So here we are in Lakeland, in a smaller community, but uh, providing good results. I I I believe so. Now, where? In the medical study, sir, did you decide or when or what happened? What prompted the decision? This is the field I'd like to go in. It's interesting. Uh, you know, the first thing that I kind of fell in love with was just the artistic side of medicine in general. And that, of course, lends itself to plastic surgery in the bigger picture. And as I went through, reconstruction of the face really seemed to be my passion Um, It's such an intricate area to work and certainly a lot of subtle nuances Mm -hmm. in getting the aesthetic perfect. Um, A lot of times we strive for perfection and sometimes it's difficult to achieve, but still um, that fine, minute detail that you have to pay attention to lends itself to my personality. Yeah. So I think that's what drew me to it. Sounds like an attention to detail type of person. Very much. Yeah. Very much. So primarily the patients you're seeing are coming for what is clearly understood to be an elective procedure. Many of them, yes, absolutely. So what might a consultation sound like? Well, really, the consultation focuses primarily on the interests of the individual coming in. So they may come in and be a bit older and may have some issues with regard to the normal aging process. And those may not be their area of concern at all. Often I Hmm. joke to them and say, well, I've seen people with their neck down to their knees, but the only problem that they foresee is the spot on their cheek. So we really do focus Uh the consultation on their area of interest and what they perceive as their needs, because it's more a matter of what we see in our own mind's eye Mm -hmm. more than what I see necessarily even. So we want people to be happy with their uh, decisions and what, uh, what what we take them through. We lead them down the path based on their wanting to be there and their guidance to us. So someone comes to you, and, and let's just say they're beginning, in their own eye at any rate, to show the signs of Asian yes. uh, the, 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 we, years ago. And it's amazing how uh, the cultural norms and, and how we view ourselves uh, and even cultures itself, because in certain cultures... Uh, those fine lines are considered marks of wisdom yes. in, in, in this particular culture. Uh, and it might not necessarily be viewed that way. So someone sure. comes to you, they are showing <clears throat> what is understood to be the visible signs of aging. Right. And they are concerned that maybe the neck is drooping and the jawline is none and different like that. Um, are there some things that you're giving them to consider prior to, or, or how might that conversation sound? Certainly. And of course, as we go through the consultation, the, the conversation is the less invasive things that can be done okay. at home. Um, you know, there are so many uh, issues that should be addressed in the home environment. You know, of course, in Florida, we're constantly in the sun, you know, and if you don't take care of the sun exposure components of the effects on the skin, no matter what we do, mm-hmm. you're going to start to see some of those signs of aging, even prematurely. So a lot of it is skin care and, um, you know, the less aggressive things that are available. And then based upon their uh, desires and questioning, we'll go further if they want to go on to some of the more aggressive or surgical things. Uh, and all of those are options. 
Dr. Ron Lakani is our guest today. He's a board certified uh, facial plastic surgeon and otolaryngologist. I don't like saying that word That's with the <laughs> with the Watson <laughs> Clinic. We, we want to talk uh, some about the the work you've done overseas and the and the sure. work with children with cleft palate. But before we we get there, I I, I think that I, I am sure as in any of these um, medical fields that we, we might talk about. There have been tremendous advances o- over the past, say, 10 years. In your field, sir, what are some of the primary advances that you've seen that possibly making your work, if not want of a better word, easier, certainly more proficient? There have been a lot of advances. We all know so many of these things that are at the forefront, robotic surgery and mm-hmm. others. Um, in our field, you know, it's become much more... Um, mainstream is some of these less aggressive approaches that really provide what I would consider close to surgical results. Um, fillers are kind of first and foremost on on my mind as far as how things have advanced. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a time, in fact, even when I was in and coming out of training, where surgical uh, correction of the cheek mid-face area was pretty much the norm. Mm-hmm. Everybody was talking about it. And slowly you started to see that the filler products were becoming better and longer lasting and easier to use and better tolerated. And by filler, we're talking about things like Botox. And... Well, Botox is something that works to kind of quiet the fine lines, but fillers are volumizers. So you're okay. talking more about uh, products such as hyaluronic acid. Okay. Brand names are going to be Juvederm mm-hmm. and Re- uh, Restylane. Um, there are others in the market as so well. So you're pushing fat in the... Cause... Essentially, it's, yes. It's basically volumizing, right? Yes. So for face, um, we frequently use the filler products that are pre-made rather than using the body's own fat. Um, eventually, uh, fat transfer may become more of a mainstream thing in the face. It's already being used, but it diminishes roughly at the same rate as fillers. Mm-hmm. Some will argue that point, but generally speaking, it doesn't stay one-to-one. Uh, but with stem cells, another yes. advance that's coming forward. Um, If we're able to purify and infuse stem cells into the fat that we harvest, then, of course, that will take almost, we hope, at 100% rate. At that point, that will be the mainstream uh, is what I surmise. But it's And it's getting there. Mm -hmm. As far as advances, that's one of the huge ones. It's being studied. It's being tested. And people are talking about it. It remains controversial, but I do believe that there will be a happy medium that that we'll probably get to where, in fact, as you say, it, it will be more mainstream right. and, uh, in the future. And this is stem cells not necessarily derived from embryonic okay. research-wise, but some progenitor, progenitor cells that we have in our own bodies that can be used in that way. So it's kind of remarkable that... Yeah. We're kind of getting to that point. Sounds that way. Dr. Ram Lakhani is our guest today. He's with the Watson Clinic. He's a board-certified uh, facial uh, and rejuvenation plastic surgeon. Am yes. I saying all of that? Some long There's words. A lot of <laughs> but, 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 but we're happy <laughs> to, to have you here. Now, Thank you. Uh, n- not to be controversial, but I have to ask you this because I think probably more than any other medical field, there is a tendency for possibly the field to look a little flippant. And mm-hmm. and I think Hollywood has not helped in that sure. area because we've seen some ridiculous things. You mentioned it at the top of the program, yes. um, all in, in an effort supposedly to beautify oneself. How do you remain grounded and how do you remain relevant w- 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 without being garish and, and, and self-serving? Well, I find that, um, yes, unfortunately, some of those in our field have gone that route. Um But from my perspective, a lot of us went into this for the reconstructive side primarily. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we've transitioned into doing some cosmetic and some more than others. But really to stay grounded, you have to, in my opinion, provide the reconstructive side of this field uh, some merit. You know, you try to maintain your um, relevance by being a, a... member of the community. You want to provide these services. You want to be part of it. You want to be in it. When when people need you, you need to show up. Um, There are times just as yesterday, I was in the OR till 11 at night. And that's because we had to add on some patients that one young girl, 16-year-old, had a dog bite that tore her eyelid off. And we had to spend the time to put it together. When you see that, and Mm -hmm. when you see these kids, as you mentioned, the cleft lip and cleft palate kids included, come back, you know, even years later, you feel so much more rewarded in terms of a spiritual or personal side 
than the financial gain that can be obtained by doing a million breast augmentations or facelifts or any of those. And it depends on the individual, but to stay grounded, I think that's the most important thing to know that you went into it in medicine in general, yes. because you're here to help and to serve humanity. And as long as you can keep that as your focus, um, regardless of what route you take in your career, you'll still be on the right track. Very well said. And I think it, it needs to be pointed out here that we're not just where we talk about beautifying we're, and, and not to make any light you know, of it that if someone wants to maybe do get some fine lines off their face and some, but, but you are seeing people who've had tremendous accidents, um, uh, vehicle accidents, the, the situation with the dog. And it's wonderful that we don't have to go through life maimed, so right. to speak, and that there is in fact help. So yes, that is true. Uh, you know, even from that perspective advances, as you, uh, asked me before, I mean, in terms of reconstructive procedures, there are tremendous advances. And the goal for my cosmetic patients is similar to my goal with my reconstructive ones, that the hope is you, if you go out into the community with friends, family, and others, they'll never know that you and I have ever met. They want to see a natural mm -hmm. and normal, for reconstructive patients, we want them back to normalcy. For our cosmetic patients, we want them looking younger and better, well-rested. You know, hey, have you been on vacation? Did you get your hair done? What What did you change with your makeup? Nothing where, oh, who's your surgeon? Because mm -hmm. when they ask those questions, then you know it's not done very well. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't notice the plastic surgery. They should just notice that things are better. And that's that holds true for both sides. Absolutely. Really very well said. And I could touch a number of things out in Hollywood that you go, mm, that doesn't look too real. So it's, it's <laughs> that scary. doesn't look too normal. Very I scary. Agree. We talked about the work that you've done overseas. And I know you've worked. Is that a passion of yours? Absolutely. Those? And of course, uh, my hope is that we do more of it. Um, that's uh, one of the things that I've always wanted to do. In fact, part of why I chose my career path is for that reason. Uh, and, I, and I do. I love it. Well, I, I know that you are not left with a lot of time, doctor, yes. <laughs> to do much. I mean, you mentioned about doing surgery until after 11 yes. uh, at night. So there's not much time. But when there is a little time, what, what might we find you doing other than prancing on, on stage at the Lakeland <laughs> Center? I'm not even <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah, quite interesting. You was. you were one of those contestants in the Mr. Central Florida event and did very I well. Was. Well, we did fine. Yeah, it was a fun event. Yes. And a great charity, of course. Um, but yeah, a lot of folks asked me if I had a couple of drinks before I got on stage, but actually <laughs> you I You were dancing. Not. I was dancing and I'm <laughs> usually quite reserved, but it, I don't know what got not into that me. night. <laughs> and certainly not, not too much. I was your wife surprised? half a cocktail that evening, surprisingly. She was very surprised. She could not believe <laughs> that I had gotten out there. Um, in front of all those folks. But it was a fun event, and the guys in it were just yes, tremendous. wonderful. And I kind of got into it just from the camaraderie of being with all those nice folks. Yes. It was really nice. Yes. And so um, do you love to read, love to relax maybe? It's a good question. Love to dance? <laughs> I love to be outdoors. I love, uh, you know, as far as uh, exercise, I like to jog and swim and things like that. Um, and, of course, we've got three small kids. They're seven, five, and two, and I love spending time with them. They keep me alive and active. We have a future doctor among the bunch? Well, the middle one says it's so. He's five years old, so I'm That's... sure he'll change his mind several times <laughs> before he not. gets to that point. But you never know. Our oldest is uh, dead set against it. <laughs> She does not like the thought of anybody bleeding around her. Mm -hmm. I'm with her. That's my one, kind of girl. Our middle one, our boy is, uh, yeah, we've got a girl and two boys in the middle son. He is ready to go. Well, Dr. Ram Lakhani, just want to thank you so much for being our guest on Poe County today. Uh, you can reach the doctor at the Watson Clinic, that number, 863-904-6218, and I'm sure hoping that you will come back and visit with us real soon. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening. We'll talk again next week.